Prepare for your coding inspector interview with these insightful questions and answers covering essential inspection practices, industry standards and advanced techniques. Here we are discussing two rounds. The first round Second round interview questions. Question number one. Outline the steps you take to ensure a surface is properly prepared for coating. How to answer. Detail each step from initial assessment to surface cleaning, profiling and testing. Mention specific tools and techniques like visual inspection, surface profile gauge and cleanliness tests. Highlight your knowledge of industry standards like SSPC or NACE and how you ensure compliances. Discuss real world example where you meticulous preparation prevented potential coating failure. 
Example, first I conduct thorough visual inspection to assess the surface condition and identify any existing contamination, rust or old coatings that need to be removed. Then I review specifications and standards for the project to ensure compliance with the required surface preparation level. Next, I select the appropriate cleaning method, typically abrasive blasting for heavy duty surfaces or power tools for less intense jobs. I monitor the cleanliness and profile of the surface throughout the process using tools like surface comparators and profilometers to ensure the roughness meet the specified requirements. Finally, I perform a cleanliness inspection using tests like the cell test for soluble salt to ensure the surface is free of contaminants before the coating application begins. This systematic approach helps guarantee a long-lasting high-quality coating. Question number 2. Identify key indicators that a coating application is failing during an inspection. How to answer? Emphasize your methodological approach to inspections and familiarity with the industry standards and best practices. Discuss techniques to detect problems such as visual inspections, adhesion tests or using specialized equipment like holiday detection. Mention relevant experience where identifying a potential issue, early prevention, escalation. Example, first I focus on visual cues like blistering, cracking or peeling, which are immediate red flags. I also pay close attention to any discolorations or choking, as these can indicate UV degradation or oxidation. Another critical indicator is spotting areas which an uneven texture or thicknesses, which may signal poor application techniques or environmental contaminations. Additionally, I use tools like a dry film thickness gauge to measure the coating thicknesses and ensure it meets specifications. Addition tests can also reveal underlying issues such as insufficient surface preparation. By combining these visual and technical checks, I can quickly identify potential failures and recommend corrective actions before any escalate into more significant problems. Question number 3. Explain the importance of addition tests and how to conduct them. How to answer. Clearly articulate the type of addition test you are familiar with such as pull-off test, tape test or cross-cut test and explain the procedure for each. Highlight your attention to detail and adherence to industry standards or guidelines. Share example where conducting these tests identified potential issue before they escalate. Example, addition tests are vital to ensure that the coating will perform well under the various environmental conditions and stresses. They help verify that the coating will remain intact and protect the underlying material from corrosion, wear and other forms of degradation. Without the proper addition, even the best coating material can fail, leading to costly repairs and safety risks. When conducting an addition test, I typically start with the surface preparation, ensuring it is clean, dry and free from contaminants. I then apply the coating according to the manufacturer's specifications and allow it to cure properly. The pull-off test is my go-to method. I attach loading fixtures to cured coating and use a specialized device to apply perpendicular force until the coating detaches. The force required to remove the coating is measured, giving a clear indication of its addition strength. Additionally, I document any failure modes to understand how and why the coating might fail in real-world conditions. This thorough approach ensures that the coating will perform reliably throughout its intended lifespan. Fourth question. Discuss the role environmental conditions play in your inspection process. How to answer. Emphasize your ex expertise in monitoring and evaluating environmental conditions and using this data to make informed decision during inspection. Mention specific tools and methods to measure and document these conditions and provide examples for successful outcome due to attention to environmental factors. Example, environmental conditions are absolutely critical in the inspection process. Factors like humidity, temperature and even wind can significantly impact the coatings application and performance. I make it a priority checks to and document these conditions before, during and after the coating processes. For instance, if the humidity is too high, 
it can lead to issues like blistering or poor adhesion. In a previous project, I was inspecting a large industry tank and a forecast predicted rain. Knowing this, I coordinated with the team to expedite the application process and ensure that protective covering were in place to avoid any moisture exposure. By being proactive and vigilant about environmental conditions, I help ensure the coating's integrity and longevity, ultimately saving the company time and resources on potential rework. Question number 5. Discuss the impact of coating thickness on performance and how to measure it. How to answer. Highlight both theoretical knowledge and practical experience. Discuss specific tools and techniques like magnetic induction or eddy current testing to measure thicknesses accurately. Mention relevant standard or guidelines such as ASTM or ISO and your ability to interpret result to make informed decisions. Example, you can say like Coating thicknesses plays a critical role in determining the overall performance of a coating system. A coating that's too thin or not offer adequate protection against corrosion, leading to premature failure, while only that's too thick can offer from issues like cracking or delaminations. To ensure optimal performance, precise measurement is key. In my previous role, I often used non-destructive testing methods like ultrasonic thickness gauges and magnetic gauges to measure coating thicknesses. These tools allow me to quickly and accurately assess the thickness without damaging the coating. I would regularly calibrate the instruments to ensure their accuracy and cross-verify with the destructive testing method like cross-section microscopy when needed. This combination of techniques help maintaining the integrity of coating system and ensured it met industry standard and client specification. Which industry standards and codes are most relevant to coating inspections? And how do you stay updated on them? How to answer? Highlight specific standards and code relevant to your field such as NACE, SSPC or ISO guidelines. Mention reputable sources you use to stay informed such as professional organization, industry publications, training courses and conferences. Share example of implementing new knowledge or adapting to changes in standards. ASTM and NACE standards are crucial in coating inspections. ASTM D610 for assessing the degree of rusting and NACE SP0188 for holiday detection are frequent references in my work. I make it a point to attend industry conferences and webinars to stay current with updates. Subscribing to industry journals and being an active member of professional organizations like NACE International helps ensure I am always aware of any changes or new standards being introduced. Additionally, I regularly participate in internal training programs and peer discussions to share knowledge and best practices. This continuous learning approach not only keeps me updated but also enhances my ability to deliver high quality inspections. Cost number 9. When encountering a complex substrate, how do you determine the best pretreatment method? How to answer? Articulate your systematic approach to evaluating the substrate, including diagnostic test or assessment. Mention how do you balance theoretical knowledge with practical experience to choose a most effective methods. Discuss collaboration with colleagues or reliance on industry guidelines and illustrate with a specific example where you decision making leads to successful outcome. Example First I assess the substrate, material, composition and condition, taking note of any existing coating, contamination or corrosion. I then review the project specification and industry standards to ensure any pretreatment method align with the required performance criteria. In a previous project, we faced highly corroded steel structures. After a thorough inspection, I recommended a combination of abrasive blasting to remove a rust and a sink rich primer to enhance corrosion resistance. This approach not only met the project's stringent requirements but also extended the life cycle of a coating system. Consulting with colleagues and staying updated on a latest industry advancements is also crucial in making these decisions ensuring we always use the most effective and innovative solutions. Question number 10. Have you ever had to reject a coating applications? If so, 
what was the reason and outcome how to answer provide a specific instance where you have to reject a coding application detail the standard or criteria not met the step taken to document and communicate the issue and how you manage the situation with the team or contractor highlight the importance of adhering the quality standards and the ultimate benefit to the project example yes i had to reject a coating application on a pipeline project during my inspection i noticed that the coating thickness was not consistent with the specified requirements this inconsistency could lead to potential areas of weakness and premature failure in the coating which was unacceptable for the project standards i immediately documented the issue and communicated it to the contractor explain the specific areas that need to be addressed we held the meeting with the project manager and the coating applicator to discuss the problem and devise a corrective action plan the contractor reworked the affected sections and upon reinspection the coating met the required standards this ensured the integrity and longevity of the pipeline maintain the project overall quality and safety question number 11 provide an example of time you identify a potential safety hazard during a coating inspection how to answer focus a specific incident where you identify a safety hazard dealing the step taken to address the issue highlight your methodological approach to inspection adherence to safety standard and how your actions contributed to the project success and safety example during an inspection on a bridge rehabilitation project i noticed some corrosions starting to form on the underside of the steel beams that were not initially visible this area had been overlooked due to a difficult to access location i immediately flagged it and brought it to the attention of project manager and the safety team given the potential risk of structural weakness and the harsh environmental conditions i recommended an urgent reevaluation of the coating application in that area we arranged for a specialized inspection team to assess the extent of the corrosion and implemented a plan to strip and recoat the affected section with a more durable protection layer this proactive approach not only ensured the integrity of the structure but also prevented the potential safety hazards that could have to lead to significant issues down the line it was a classic case of how thoroughness and attention to the details can prevent more severe problems Thank you.